Nothing on the road can put quite as much of a skip in your step as driving one of these cars, even a Series 3. They're still fast, they're still fantastic, they still feel sharp, it makes a great noise, it's got wicked acceleration. My name's Danny Hopkins and I'm editor of Practical Classics magazine and I'm here at Bista Heritage talking to Nigel Thorley from the Jaguar Enthusiast Club. Uh, Nigel, we've got here a Series 3 uh, E-Type Jaguar drop head. Tell me, what's the difference between the Series 3 and the earlier E-Types? This was the first E-Type to take the, the V12 engine, which was an Italian new engine Jaguar designed in 1971, and befittingly, it should go into a sports car first. So it went into this car, even though it was intended for the XJ saloons later on. It's a real Grand Touring. It's probably one of the best Grand Touring cars in the world. That's no, fantastic. It's reflected in values somewhat. I understand Series 3s are slightly less valued than the earlier cars. That's right. Again, people go for the purity of line of the original E-Types designed by William Lyons. Yeah. And this one had to be adapted to suit the V12, much heavier, much larger engine. Mm. Uh, and so people think it's not quite as E-Type was supposed to be, but nevertheless, yeah. it's a superb motor car. It is, and, and, I, and that makes it, I think, the entry-level E-Type, if you like. If you like, yes, if you like. In which case, would you help me? Because I'd like to see the, the things that you need to check for if you were to okay. purchase one of these fabulous vehicles. Should we start down the front? Yeah, fine. The body is the most important thing. It's far more important than mechanics because yeah. this is the main structure of the car. If you can bear in mind, this car uh, doesn't have a chassis. It's a monocoque construction. Uh -huh. So all the strength is in the front and rear bulkheads. Yes. It's in the floors, it's in the sills. So any corrosion is vital to look at and identify how badly it is. The bonnet represents about a third of the whole car. Mm. And because of that, you need to look at the bonnet first. You can still buy a brand new bonnet made by the same people who used to make it for Jaguar in the first place. Wow. The problem is it's not just an expensive thing to buy, it's an extraordinarily expensive thing to fit yes. because every bonnet has to be hand fitted to every individual car. Should we have a look at the engine, mate? Sure. The V12 engines are virtually unburstable, but they must be well maintained. Head gaskets can be a problem. This is an all aluminium engine. Right. So you can have major problems if they're not filled with the right percentage of antifreeze and that sort of thing. Absolutely. Not maintained, oil change regularly and all the rest of it. Yes. The simple things that can go wrong with, with most of these cars is that this is a beautifully engineered capstan that operates the uh, throttle linkages yes. for all the carburetors. And if it's wrongly adjusted, you'll never get the performance out of the car. You'll never get the feeling of what the V12 no. is really like. It's getting the details right. Well, I'm going to take this for a drive in a minute. Is there anything I should look out for on the road? You should feel that one with the car. Yeah. They are silky smooth. The steering, the rack pinion steering is good. The performance should be effortless. They are a real Grand Tourer car. It is fantastic. Now, when you're on your test drive, just keep a few eyes out for a whiffs of smoke in the back. Again, these engines are very, very, very strong. But if They've suffered a head gasket failure, you might need to look out for a variety of woes that are familiar to every classic. Be really aware that the rear suspension should feel nice and planted. If it isn't, you might have bush trouble, you might have radius arm trouble. Take it on a reasonably long test drive, let it get hot if you can. As long as you make it feel centred on the road, then, then you should be okay. Anything else? investigate. If you have to do an awful lot of work on your Series 3, you might not necessarily make your money back in the same way as you would on a Series 1 or 2. For me though, the Series 3, if you want to take it on a long journey, for daily use, it's the E-Type to have. That's controversial, but um, I'll stand by it.